an early piece of equipment scientifically that you will be exposed to, um, especially if you're doing something like climate change, is going to be a thermometer. Um, most people are familiar with the thermometer and how it, and maybe even used them, but I'm going to show you how they actually work and how to read them properly. You might be surprised. A lot of people don't do it correctly, so hooray. That's what we're here for, right? Um, so a lot of thermometers either are mercury or alcohol thermometers. Um, that's not the drinking alcohol. That's like a, uh, it's a different type of alcohol, but it expands and contracts uh, as uh, heat uh, makes contact with the thermometer itself. So ultimately, the term to, to learn here is that the thermometer uses um, and measures what's called sensible heat. You know, So when someone says it's hot outside or cold outside or says it's 72 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a measurement of sensible heat. It ultimately acts by atoms hitting the bulb, and the bulb's down here at the bottom. Turn my laser pointer. This is the bulb down here. So as atoms strike off the bulb, boop, boop, so they're in, in the atmosphere. They transfer heat to that energy to the bulb, which warms up the liquid or cools it off if they're moving slow. Um, and so heat move energy, sensible heat, is actually the movement of atoms striking an object and transferring that energy. Um, the air has atoms in it. They're moving around. In fact, you can move your hand back and forth and feel the resistance of the air if you'd like. Um, but as this bulb warms up, there's a little bitty cylinder, a little tube in here that's in a vacuum, which means there's no air in it, so that the, the liquid can expand and contract depending upon how warm this bulb is, the environment, how, how well the atoms are transferring the warmth to the liquid. And then we've got marks along the cylinder that let us know just exactly how far that one's gone up. So this one is about 21 degrees Celsius, as an example. So there's your little marks there. So ultimately, a thermometer is measuring energy as it strikes the bulb. The rules for using a thermometer are pretty straightforward. There's not a bunch, but um, you know, you want to be careful with it because it typically is a glass or a plastic cylinder that can break if you smack it against something. Uh, so we want to try to make sure that we don't smack it against things. The other ones are really how you just uh, handle it. Um, so one, you don't want to touch the bulb, which is in the red arrow right there. That's the bulb. The reason you don't want to touch the bulb because if it gets wet um, or gets oil on it or stuff like that, you can actually get a false reading because it's conducting differently than it should be normally. Try not to hold the thermometer um, down toward the bottom of it because you don't want your body heat to make contact with the, the glass or the plastic because then your body heat can actually warm up the bulb instead of the air warming up the bulb and then you will get a false reading there or even the bottom part. So we try to avoid the blue circle there. So you want to hold it typically up top if you don't have a holder like this one has a plastic holder, just hold the plastic. And then um, if you have to hold the cylinder, you try to hold it up toward the top of the cylinder. We take air temperature. So we talk about what the temperature outside is. We've established in the United States that that's about 4.5 feet above the ground, or internationally, it's about one and a half meters above the ground. So it's good to figure out what four and a half feet above the ground is. So you know how, how far the air temperature should be. Because if you get too close to the surface of the earth, you're actually going to get radiant heat from the earth or even cooling uh, from the earth itself. Um, you also want to make sure that it's in the shade because sun making contact with the plastic or the glass can actually warm up the glass itself and you're not getting air temperature, you're getting insulation, which is solar energy and heat altogether. The other thing is you want to give it about 60 seconds in your environment to stabilize um, because you don't want the bulb to expand or contract. So if it's still gaining heat from the atmosphere, things are bouncing off it, boing, 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 boing. Um, we want to make sure that that stabilizes so that the temperature of the bulb is finalized and then you're going to get your reading. And then when you read it, you want to make sure that you're looking at the top of the liquid perpendicular. So you want that to be at a right angle to your eyeball. So literally move your eye up the scale until you see the top of it. And that's how you read the measurement. Because if you read it at an angle, you can actually have the appear to be higher up or lower down depending upon where the markings are. So those are the quote unquote rules to follow. If you want to try to figure out what kind of thermometer you have, um, usually you can find a mark there. So this is degrees Celsius. That's what that little circle means, degrees Celsius. You can see degrees Fahrenheit, which is what we use in the United States a lot, but science uses Celsius, so we're going to use that. Um, you can even find a K, which stands for Kelvin. Those are super fancy, but we won't get into those. Uh, we're going to use Celsius. A uh, couple other marks about the Celsius thing is basically from zero degrees. Zero degrees means water freezes. 100 degrees means water boils. 
as opposed to Fahrenheit, which is 32 degrees freezes and 212 degrees boils. There's a reason for those numbers, but we won't get into that here. Um, so Celsius is, um, you know, when you find a thermometer, it's like, okay, here's zero. So this one goes positive and negative. So we can have negative values and we have positive values. We want to see what the markings are. So it looks like every 10 are marked. So bing, bing, see that? Well, every 10. And so then once you find that, you see how many little tick marks, those little lines in between. So it looks like we've got one, two, three, four. So there's four in between. So that means there's five steps. And then we divide the steps. So it looks like every one of those marks is two degrees on this particular thermometer. Other thermometers will be different. Sometimes every single one will be measured. Sometimes they won't. Um, and so you can see how those things work right there. So if it's that one right there that my little laser pointer is on, that is two marks above the 10, and every mark is two, so two times two is four, so that would be 14 degrees Celsius right there. That's how it works. When you hold it, you wanna make sure that you're holding it by the plastic. I'm actually holding it a little bit low here on this particular case. Um, you can hold it a little bit higher there. I might to make sure that I'm not touching the bulb um, I know that every single mark is uh, two degrees, so there's zero, so there's two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, twenty, um, and then we get to twenty-two, it looks like just over twenty-four, you see how that liquid is just a little bit higher than that? This one's going to be twenty-four, and that's twenty-six, it's not halfway to there, so it's not to twenty-five, it's just about halfway to halfway there, a quarter way there, so I would measure this one at 24.5 degrees Celsius. Always include your units when you're writing down your values, otherwise it can be confused by somebody else who's reading it later. So common mistakes that we can have with uh, using a thermometer is one is if you read the liquid, the top of the liquid from an angle, um, or it's not per you're not perpendicular to it, so you can get it, you know, you're just reading it wrong, it's a user error. Um, the other ones, you cannot wait long enough for the bulb liquid to expand or contract fully, which means it hasn't stabilized to its temperature. Another one is that the sun is hitting it. You can even experiment if the sun is out. You can put your thermometer in the sun and see what happens to it. You'll see that it actually goes up quite a bit. Um, taking temperature next to a radiating body can be a hot or cold surface. So if you're next to a radiator or a refrigerator or close to your body even, um, anything that is producing heat or is absorbing heat can change your thermometer. Um, holding the thermometer wrong, which means you're touching the bulb or somewhere down low, your body heat can transfer. Taking the temperature at the wrong height, so if you're too low or too high, we try to standardize it again, um, uh, four and a half feet above the ground or about a meter and a half uh, above the ground. Taking the temperature of the bulb has moisture on it because if there's any wind, uh, we call that advection. If there's any wind, it will cause evaporation and make a cooler temperature. We'll talk about that with sling psychrometers later. Um, or not reading the tick marks properly. So there's two tick marks and they're actually two degrees a piece and you only counted them as one degree a piece, then you, you did a user error. There are other types of error that exist out there. So if anybody's curious, there's three types of error that we can introduce in any type of scientific endeavor. Uh, user error is, the person doing it make, did, the, did it wrong. Instrument error means that like your thermometer wasn't cal calibrated properly or there's uh, it's got a leak or there's something wrong with it. Or environmental error can have something to do with the conditions in which you're taking the temperature aren't really conducive to getting an accurate temperature. And so how does it actually work? So the last little thing here is, um, uh, again, the thermometer uses a liquid that will expand and contract based upon whatever the temperature of that liquid is, and it expands at an even rate. So as it gets hotter all the way up to the boiling point, or cooler all the way down to the freezing point, and typically it has a really low freezing point, so that's lower than water, because if you used water in a thermometer, it would expand and contract, but it would freeze when it got to, to uh, zero degrees. So that would be a problem. So we use mercury, but mercury is dangerous when it breaks open in a liquid form. So we typically use a type of alcohol. Um, kind of like a, it's similar to rubbing alcohol, it's a different type. And then we color it so that you can see it. That's what the little red dye is. And so the thermometer is in a vacuum and it allows the liquid to rise and, and fall real easily. Uh, the tube's gonna be marked along the side or on the holder um, to how far down the scale you need to go. Um, the bulb ultimately warms by energy transference by conduction. So heat actually being conveyed by physical contact. So this is sensible heat. Um, warm air particles have a much higher energy, um, or warm any, part, any type of particles. Warm particles have a lot more energy than cold particles. 
and heat is really just a measurement of movement of atoms bouncing off. Um, it's crazy to think about that the atmosphere is just bouncing off a few atoms all the time. Um, but if there's lots of energy there, uh, it's hot. And if there's low energy, it's cold. Um, and don't get that confused with wind because wind is a different old critter. But this is the movement of like the atoms themselves, the energy stored up in them. Absolute zero, which is the coldest anything can get, is um, is when all movement of the atoms stop, even the electrons stop moving around the nucleus. Uh, so that's uh, super cold. Um, so on warm days, particles are basically moving, vibrating, spinning, uh, bouncing off of things. And this energy is what we call sensible heat. In cold days, they're still moving and they're still vibrating, they're still spinning, but those things are just, are just moving a little bit slower. Uh, and then we can actually use our thermometer to give us um, our accurate reading. And so there you go. Um, that's how thermometers work and how you read them. Just make sure that you read the top of the liquid right there at a right angle um, and understand the tick marks and the calibration. And you're on your way to start recording data.